Good evening, you're watching News Mongolian and Beyond. I'm your host, Tanner Kambatra. And for our top stories, Mongolia Economic Forum 2023 sets to coincide with Nadum Festival celebrations. The Explorer of the Mars V project will do research in the Mongolian Gobi. And Secretary General of the European External Action Service on working visit. And for the news, stay tuned. Seven years ago, Mongolia organized the high-scale Asia-Europe meeting during the NATO Festival. Now in 2023, the Mongolia Economic Forum will be organized in Mongolia, coinciding with the NATO Festival on the 9th and 10th of July. These events are expected to be as significant as large-scale as SM was seven years ago. The Mongolia Economic Forum is the nation's premier platform for addressing economic and social challenges and finding solutions to accelerate Mongolia's development. Since 2010, it has convened with high-level representatives from the government, private sector, civil society, academia and international organizations for an annual Today Discussions Forum. Key discussions at this year's event revolve around Mongolia's role in the global supply chain, regional trade integration, the business and investment environment, and its potential as a regional business hub. In the midst of Mongolia's robust recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, the economy exceeded expectations with a growth rate of 4% in 2022, and for the growth is projected for this year and 2024. The Mongolia Economic Forum 2023, co-chaired by Prime Minister Ayrton Losnamsra and Rio Tinto Group Chairman Dominic Barton, aims to explore recent achievements and emphasize the importance of public-private partnership. The forum is committed to being Mongolia's first carbon-neutral event, aligning with environmentally sustainable goals. It expects participation from over 300 government officials, 300 private sector representatives, 400 civil society organizations and public administration representatives, as well as 500 international organization representatives. The event provides a platform for constructive dialogue, enabling stakeholders to shape Mongolia's future and drive economic progress. The Rio Tinto Group will have a strong presence with its entire board of directors and executive management team attending the forum, showcasing their commitment to business relations in Mongolia. The participation of representatives from the world's top 45 financial institutions highlights the forum's significance as a platform for collaboration. Rio Tinto, with its extensive experience and relationships in implementing projects globally, aims to promote the successful Oyotato project in Mongolia and attract potential investors. Major Wall Street banks and internationally renowned investors have been invited to participate, marking a significant milestone in gathering investors on a large scale. This endeavor is expected to unlock opportunities for domestic businesses, stimulate foreign investments, and position Mongolia as an attractive investment destination. Rio Tinto's reputation and network will enhance Mongolia's visibility and appeal to global investors, fostering economic growth within the country. A group of Mongolians have launched the Mars V project and they are in the fourth year of the implementation of the project to build a comprehensive training academy for survival and adaptation and space exploration and development free zone in the Mongolian Gobi. We aim to do research regarding geology and ground explorations. The explorations of what types of plants will grow in the Mongolian Gobi will be researched in the future. I think it will help to limit or even stop desertification that is currently happening in the Mongolian Gobi. The geologists from Mongolia is working on the biggest foreign projects, and the foreign explorers are working as advisors on this project. So in the future, research for the explorations will be done with their advice. Now let's take a look to Mongolia's current affairs. On Wednesday, Deputy Foreign Minister Amar Dufshan Gomsura held a meeting with Mr. Stefano Sanino, the Secretary General of the European External Action Service, who is currently on a working visit to Mongolia from July 4th to 7th. This visit marks the first high-level interaction between Mongolia and the European Union since 2018, following the COVID-19 pandemic. During the meeting, they discussed the present status of Mongolia and the European Union relations, anticipated future developments and various international matters. The Deputy Foreign Minister emphasized the significance of maintaining an active bilateral dialogue mechanism to enhance cooperation in mutually beneficial sectors. He expressed confidence that the upcoming scheduled meeting of the Joint Mongolia and European Union Committee, set to take place this month in Brussels, will be successful. 
Secretary General Sanino affirmed the European Union's commitment to expanding and strengthening bilateral and multilateral relations with Mongolia as its third neighbor. He highlighted the shared values of democracy, human rights, and the rule of law as the foundation for further cooperation between the European Union and Mongolia. Thank you for staying with us. Now let's take a look at the currency exchange rates provided by Mongol Bank. Here's the international news from our partner agencies. UN Nuclear Agency Head Rafael Mariano Grossi said Wednesday he was satisfied with what he saw after visiting Japan's tsunami wrecked nuclear power plant. In a report submitted to the Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida, the International Atomic Energy Agency affirmed the safety of the contagious plant to release treated radioactive water into the sea. As you all know, uh, yesterday uh, I handed over to Prime Minister Kishida the comprehensive report prepared by the IAEA task force after two years of uh, work on the analysis and the evaluation of uh, Japan's basic policy uh, with regard to the uh, water accumulated around uh, the plant. So for the last, uh, for the past uh, five hours or so, I have been um, visiting uh, different uh, um, uh, places, different locations, um, and I was also able to look closer uh, to the facilities that are in preparation in case there is a decision to start with the control discharges. Um, and uh, I was uh, satisfied with what, uh, with what I saw. A massive earthquake and tsunami on March 11, 2011 destroyed the Fukushima Daiichi plant's cooling systems, causing three reactors to melt and contaminating their cooling water, which has leaked continuously. The water is collected, treated and stored in about 1,000 tanks, which will reach their capacity in early 2024. Much of the Fukushima wastewater contains cesium and other radionuclides, but it will be filtered further to bring it below international standards for all but tritium, which is inseparable from water. It then will be diluted by 100 times with seawater before it is released. The European Union took a novel step to adapt its food production to the new ways of the world on Wednesday, proposing to embrace the latest gene techniques that it hopes will help counter global challenges like climate change and shortages while still keep nature and consumers safe. For decades, the 27-nation bloc was conservative in its use of genetically modified organisms, which often evoked connotations of frankenfood rather than the improvement of crop production, while the United States and other countries quickly adopted these new bioengineered technologies. In many ways, new genomic techniques can give you the same result um, as uh, through conventional and natural selection or through targeted crossbreeding, but with much more speed, precision, and efficiency. In other cases, genetic, uh, genetic modifications can be more complex. In our proposal, we therefore introduce a clear split. Plants developed with new genomic techniques, which could have also been created the conventional way, will require notification in a central register. The seeds must be labeled clearly to ensure our farmers can choose freely. Plants that could not have been developed through classic selection or targeted crossbreeding will continue to go through an authorized process, as already applies to GMO crops. For the organic sector, NGTs will not be allowed. On Wednesday, however, the European Union's Executive Commission threw its weight behind the use of so-called new genomic techniques, which aim to change organisms in a much less intrusive way than the GMOs of the past. 
and may allow many of these products to be sold without special labeling. Wednesday's proposal marks only the beginning of a lengthy process across the European Union as the member states and the European Union Parliament must endorse the plans before they can become a reality. The current GMO legislation dates back to 2001 when the issue caused division within the European Union for a generation. The existing legislation provided reassurance to environmentalists that the European Union would not become a free-for-all for agro-multinationals to produce GMOs in large quantities and sell them to the bloc's 450 million citizens without detailed labeling and warnings. However, these environmentalists are once again deeply concerned, fearing that even the newest tools still present too many dangers. If you have any further questions, do not. Here's the weather forecast of all major cities. Well, that's all for today. Thank you for staying with us. We'll see you tomorrow with new news and updates. Have a nice evening. Goodbye.